Hey, it's Fred. I'm Dave from Dirt Every Day. Check out this free episode, and if you like what you see, check out the info below to find out where you can see even more cool shows. There's thousands of your favorite car shows from Discovery and Motor Trend, just a click away. Enjoy the episode. This thing on Dirt Every Day is the return of the Junkyard YJ. Now it's on 40s and tons. We're going rock crawling. Which league? Every year, Peterson's Four Wheel and Off Road magazine goes on a week long four wheeling trip called Ultimate Adventure. And the way this works is a bunch of people from all over America, from readers, sponsors, and staffers, all come together to one location. It's a different place every year, and they all bring their 4x4s and they basically live out of their four wheel drives for a week. They go four wheeling, they have road days, so you have to have enough space in a vehicle to carry all your stuff. It has to be capable enough that it can run trails and it also has to run down the road because there are road days in between the different trails. So what is required for a vehicle to pass tech inspection on Ultimate Adventure? Uh, you have to have a self-recovering winch. You gotta have a roll cage or a good roll bar. 35 inch tires, two lockers, and... 35 inch tires or bigger. Or bigger. Fire extinguisher, first aid kit, and a rugged radio now. It and used to be a CB. And a parking brake. And a parking brake, that one's hard. This vehicle right here, this 94YJ, yep. Dave and I dug this out of a junkyard on a prior episode and drove it home after doing some modifications to it. On this episode, we're gonna make this thing capable enough that it could go on Ultimate Adventure. And it's gonna do a good job of it because we're putting it on huge tires. And then we're gonna go see if it does a good job at it. It'll do a good job. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job, Dave. So what you want is super reliable. Like you've already checked the belts and you got a good water pump on it and you got good radiator hoses and you've got a fresh air cleaner and your truck is really prepped for Ultimate Adventure. Fred, how much of that have you done over the last couple of years on this? Oh, I was gonna say all of it, but then you said on this. Oh. <laughs> Cranking and... It still runs. Jeep! 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 We got the Jeep in the shop. What are we doing? We know that the smallest tire you can take on Ultimate Adventure is 35s. So we need big, bigger. So we're gonna go to 40s. You don't need 40s to go on Ultimate Adventure, but 40s are way cooler. We're gonna want bigger axles. In order to put one ton axles under it, we are going to need to figure out how to make our suspension work. So we're gonna try and stuff one ton axles under the YJ with leaf springs, and then we need gearing. Um, when you run big tires, you need low gearing. I tracked down a Rubicon transfer case, which has a four to one, and that is on its way, and hopefully we can make that bolt in there. It should bolt in, but we will find out for sure once it's here. The front axle disconnect will come out, the brakes will be disconnected, drive shafts will be disconnected, um, the shocks will be disconnected. We might just leave them in here for now. Front leaf springs, we're gonna figure out if we can fit the front axle spring under. Uh, what that'll do is it'll help keep the vehicle really low but the axle center chunk is a lot bigger than the Dana 30, so we have to look and see how everything's gonna fit. Plus, in order to line up with the spring pads on the front axle, we're gonna move the springs outboard of the frame. This is the rear axle that was in the YJ. This is a Dana 35. It's a C-clip axle. It's about a seven and a half inch ring gear. We put 35s on it and it survived, but it's with an open diff. So the rear axle is going to be much bigger. This is a corporate 14 bolt out of a one ton Chevy truck. It's got a 10 and a half inch ring gear, inch and a half 30 spline axle shafts, and then it is rated what for 58 to 6,800 pounds? 
5,700 to 8,600 pound gross vehicle weight rating. So it'll take a ton of weight on it. These are really big and beefy. Um, lots of people run these all the way up to 44 or 50 inch tires. Yeah, I saw guys in Florida on tractor tires and 14 volts. We might be able to reuse these shock brackets if we cut them off clean and move them, but everything else has got to go. Cool. So one of the requirements for Ultimate Adventure is that you have a roll cage or a roll bar. Uh, I think this would probably suffice to pass tech, but I wouldn't be, feel real safe about rolling a Jeep without any protection up here. So I am going to do a front cage tie-in basically to the stock roll bar. Do a new tube here, kickers down to the floor, and then the spreader bar across, and then I may do something else in there. Hopefully it goes quick. Stop shop for car lovers. Motor Trend, the ultimate automotive streaming service. It's not about miles per gallon, it's about miles, miles per, gallon. per gallon. Get the entire Motor Trend library, including every episode of Roadkill and Roadkill Garage. Dirt every day. <laughs> head to head, throttle out, and world's greatest drag race. Uh, why do we do it? Because we can. But now, there's a whole new library of car shows available. Watch Bitchin' Rides, catch up on old episodes of Overhauling or American Chopper, and see the latest Diesel Brothers and Wheeler Dealers episodes. You know what? There's even live racing and auctions. If you love automotive, there's only one place to stream. Start your free trial today and get Motor Trend on any of your favorite devices. This front axle is a reverse rotation, also known as a high pinion Ford Dana 60. It's really good for a front axle because you want a high pinion in the front if at all possible. Overall, much beefier housing, bigger axle shafts, bigger ring gear. It has a kingpin style knuckle, um, bigger vehicle weight rating. So I am going to start tearing this down, cleaning it up. There are a few brackets. There's like some sway bar bracket and a mount bracket here that I'm gonna cut off and get this cleaned up. Pull the axle shafts, clean out all the diff, and be ready to start putting new gears and lockers in this as soon as they show up. Come on over, Dave. Let's talk about transfer cases. Real quick. All right. This is our old transfer case, 231. 2.72 to 1 low range. This is the transfer case we're going to replace it with if it bolts in. This is a Jeep JK Rubicon case. I'm banking on that this circular six pattern will be the same as this. The input spline 27 should be the same as that. It'll bolt right up. We won't have a speedo for right now. Maybe we can fix that in the future and hopefully we can swap the shifter linkage over and this will go right in and then we can measure for drive shafts. This is a junkyard case. These go for somewhere around 1000 to 1500 bucks. If you were really going to spend some money, you would go to an Atlas. This is going to work just fine. We're gaining lower gears and a fixed yoke all in one shot. Yep. The front suspension uh, leaf spring hangers are underneath the frame. We want them to be outboard of the frame. So I ordered a kit that has new shackle hangers. So I need to cut all of these old ones off. But I'm going to get the bumper out of the way so that we can work in here. We got the old front suspension mounts cut off and I'm starting to put the new ones on. I have a kit to push the steering box forward. We got a lot to do. Yep, we're gonna work late. We'll be back at it early tomorrow. It's the morning of day three. We stayed late last night and worked on the suspension. Dave worked on the cage. Now he's spray painting the cage. It's gonna match the shocks and the seats will match that color because he didn't cover the seats up. But today we got a lot to do. We got to get the springs under this thing. We got to get the axles under it so we can measure for drive shafts. Then we got to pull the axles back out and stuff the gears and lockers in them. We got a lot to do. We 
we think our plan is to go with Wagoneer Springs, spring over, because these YJ ones will probably die pretty quickly. And if it's too tall, or if it rides too rough, we can always pull some leaf springs out of that pack. There are other packs out there that are specifically for spring over, but because we're on a timeline, we're going with what we have right here. This is our front Dana 60. It has 410 gears and an open differential. So we called Motive Gear, we got some 488 gears, and we called Eaton, and we got a Detroit Locker. Yay! So what this will do is it'll give us lower gearing, reducing the stress upstream, and helping turn the big 40-inch tires. Plus the Eaton Detroit Locker is a full-time locker. That means if power comes to the front end, it will send power evenly to both sides. Most of the time, you'll want a thick gear carrier, a 410 carrier, to run lower gears. We are buttoning up the bearings on the front Detroit, and then we're gonna stab it in the housing, check our backlash on a pattern, and hopefully it'll be good. Then we can start sealing up the front end and get it underneath the Jeep. We're almost done. Yep, we just got half of the stuff to finish, and only a third of the time left. We're doing better than normal. We're right on schedule. Dave, I got his tires. Right on. These are 40 inch Patagonia MTs by Milestar. This is a new tire. The cool thing about these tires is they're pretty affordable. Um, and I've been seeing a lot of these out on the trail. They measured just over 39, right around 39 and a half, which is pretty standard for most tires. They don't usually measure the size that are stamped on the side, so. These are cool methods. Yeah, so this is the new 701 Trail Series method. Yep, I've seen these. They've got this extra biting edge. This has this little, like, ridges. So when you air up the tire and it pops over this inner safety bead, then these little ridges help hold the bead of the tire on. Then you can run pretty low air pressures. Plus, they're not a bead lock, so they're street legal. And you can take them to any tire store and get them mounted up. U-bolts showed up, these came from Fabworks, and the spring plates are from Dave's Off-Road. I had this leftover high steer arm. I had an old ARB diff cover. I put some aftermarket 35 spline hubs on that I had laying around. So everything's coming together. I'm gonna try and get these U-bolts underneath here. Hopefully they fit and are perfect. Then we can bolt the front axle to the leaf springs really good and tight, and then it can go back up and we can work on steering. Three days in and we got a Jeep sitting on tons. It looks really cool. It's gonna be a big Jeep. I'm gonna finish the drive shaft. We gotta button up the steering, put a winch on it, wheels and tires, and we're out. We stayed up really late last night and huffed a bunch of spray paint fumes and then drank a bunch of coffee. But look, it's got steering, it's got axles, it's ready to roll. We got drive shafts. All right, let's finish it up. Let's go smash all this stuff into boulders. All right. Big axles, yep. lockers, yep. gears, done. front and rear recovery points. Got it. We're done. Rock crawl road trip. Let's go. All right. Does it steer? Yeah. Does it stop? Oh, push push it off. It's going pretty soft. Go up. Watch out for cars. It's a little rough. Yeah. That's all right. Pack up our gear and head to the desert? I think so. Find something cool, I'll come up with an adventure. I love it! <laughs> Those guys don't even know it's coming. We're really building a pacer? Oh, this thing is so weird. <laughs> it hurts my spine, but the rest of me is having fun. <laughs> it's like the slowest donut ever. Pack up our tools, go play in the dirt. Dirt every day, every episode now streaming on the Motor Trend app. Start your free trial today and get Motor Trend on any of your favorite devices.
Morning, Dave. Morning. Jeep's driving awesome. What is this with us just building normal stuff? I know. We need look, to build something sketchy. Look, our hand, like, hands off the <laughs> wheel, still goes down the road. The heater works. Doesn't have crazy bump steer. No death wobbles yet. Last time we were here was 127 degrees, like the last couple of days of June. It was nuts. It's the same trail we ran back in 2016. Yeah, that was like a gnarly start of Ultimate Adventure. It was kind of like, hey everybody, this week's gonna be tough. Yeah. So this trail is called Isham Canyon. Yep. And we're gonna meet up with Christian Hazel. He's the editor of Peterson's Four Wheel and Off Road Magazine. Christian runs Ultimate Adventure, so he should know if this thing will pass tech inspection. And we're also gonna meet up with our buddy Keeper Joe. He helped us finish this thing up at the last minute. Thanks, Joe. Here they are. Uh, oh. there, buddies. <laughs> There's our friends. Hey, dudes. Hey, that was quite the angry entry. Yeah, he does that sometimes. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh, good. Thanks, thanks for stopping in time. Thanks for helping us with our Jeep, buddy. <laughs> this is the heap, huh? Yep, this is the junkyard you YJ. Guys, you guys made it and no one was pushing? Not yet. So it, it seems to run and drive all by itself. This yep. thing is like driving down the highway like it's stock still. I don't yeah. know how it'll wheel. One week to one tons. Yeah, so what do you think? I think it's pretty ugly, so awesome. Do you think it would pass tech inspection to go on Ultimate Adventure? Uh, I don't know, I've got the uh, I've got the sheet, we can go over it and uh, I'll give it a once over and let you know how you did. I think we did just about everything. Yeah? Yeah. Vehicle must be roadworthy, you drove it here, right? Yep. Capable of speeds of 60. We did yep. that. Yeah, all right. Front and rear lockers. Yes, Detroit's. Detroit's, awesome. Licensed and insured. Yes. It actually is. It even passed smog. You've got insurance? Yes. Wow, and you have a valid driver's license. Yes, oh, last I, I checked. <laughs> you've got a tow hook here, you've got a winch, you've got a cage. Where's your rear to, uh, recovery point? Well, there's one right there on the rear bumper. Um, oh, you mean self-recovery point? <laughs> I mean, if there was like a kid stuck, like on a scooter, we could recover him. Okay, we're gonna have to make sure that's tied in securely to uh, some steel back there. You got a full size spare? Yep. Functioning parking brake? Yep. Let's see. Yep, it clicks. I heard a click. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got uh, just a little bit of work to do. I mean, you almost made it. So more importantly, is this the type of vehicle you would pick to go on Ultimate Adventure? Well, I don't know, you know, if we wanted to uh, spray rust and debris all over the trail, <laughs> I mean, we're really looking for a balanced field. Variety. Variety, exactly. Um, so, probably not, although it is a YJ. <laughs> it's not a JK like everyone in the Brothers building these days. So. Well, I, I mean, I think what's important is like, we showed a way to build a Jeep that could go on the types of trails but I think every viewer needs to take it on himself to come up with something really cool and different. So this trail is Isham Canyon. We ran this trail in 2016 and it was really hot. And usually we start out like on a sort of easy-ish trail shakedown run and the year 2016 it was like no holds barred. Yeah. Get your good. rigs up this <laughs> hardcore trail and hope for the best. It's the ultimate adventure, it's not the, the intermediate adventure. You survive it, you've got some bragging rights under your belt. You got a beautiful day. Let's hit it. All right. You wanna drive, Dave? Nope. All right, junkie. Come on, Jeep. Get up this hill. Yeah. All right. Good job. Seems like it's gonna be good. Yeah. Come on, Joe. I know there's a place up here where one of the guys on UA flopped over. Yeah, that was this. This is like a gnarly uphill to a hard right. Christian's walking it no problem. Yeah. No, I think we'll be fine. Let's try 14 volt.
wasn't graceful, but it did it. <laughs> Big parts. <laughs> One of the best things about wheeling anytime, but even more so on Ultimate Adventure, is there's a bunch of people around. And so you have people to help spot or give you a line or just heckle you and make fun of you if you're not making it up an obstacle. Good times. Yeah, that was cool and all with your wheelie popping. Yeah, and your slinky suspension. Wait till you see us. Leaf springs. The West wasn't won on coilovers. No. Well, they went down the highway smooth. Yeah. They're going over the rocks and not chucking out or doing anything weird. The wheels aren't burping in the air. That's cool. It's always weird trying something new that you haven't ever seen before. Which side, which side did Christian go? He went that way, the hard line. Oh, that's the hard line? I think so. I don't know. They're both pretty hard. Not doing too bad. They could use a little more low range in those gears, but I mean, that's a well set up Jeep. One tons, 40s. You shouldn't have any problem with this trail, really. four-inch wagon air springs are not super flexy, which is probably good because otherwise the tires would be in the body. I like the Detroits. There's a few times where it wanted to push straight, but 90% of the time you just don't even have to worry about the lockers, they're on. The Milestar tires, we could probably air those down a little bit more. And these method wheels that keep the tires on the bead at low pressure seem to be working just as designed. Almost out of this canyon. This is pretty much the last obstacle, I think. This I can't really remember. Obstacle is no joke. So when we did this before, I came in my Jeep, my summer camp Jeep, and I drove right up this. Yep. And I was in my little 73 Toyota, which usually climbs ledges really well. And I got here and I was like <laughs> doing all that stuff. And I ended up having to get a tow or a tug or winch pull cable or something, but so Dave's gonna redeem himself. He's gonna drive the junkyard YJ right up this thing, no problem. Yeah, and if I don't drive it right up, I'll drive it right under its roof. Oh, 
Christian and it just doesn't want to climb this right here. David's pointed it straight up about six times now. Go, 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 go. Right there, right there. Bring it back, bring it back, passenger. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked my hands off the wheel. <laughs> there it goes. Full cable. <laughs> Just needed a little bit. I got totally denied on that again. I don't know if it's my lack of skill behind the wheel, or if it's wheelbase, or if it's what, but I wasn't getting this Jeep up that hill. So that's what the winch is up there for. You spend a lot of money on those things. <laughs> we did it, we built a cool Jeep. It's on big parts and we took it wheeling. You can drive a Jeep on one tons really hard. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and you can smash them into rocks. You can bounce it off of that stuff. Yeah. And they hold tough. But overall, like, I think we have something that could go on Ultimate Venture oh, or yeah. just go sure. wheeling any weekend. Totally. I think we did a good job here. Good work on this thing. Let's get out of this trail before it gets dark. You ready, Joe? I'm ready. That's it for Dirt Every Day. We'll see you guys next time. The camera did was like, you gotta ditch the top on that thing because they can't see us. What? Yeah. Are you happy camera guy? All right, we made them happy. First time in 85 episodes. <laughs>